Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have Dale Pauls, the Health Care Center's Director, with us. Welcome, Dale. Good to be here. Dale's going to give us an overview of some of the current activities at the health care centers. As you know, this has been one of the, the major challenges for the county board and county as a whole. There's been discussion for the last four or five years and a fair amount of change that's, that's going there. That's probably the understatement of the day. And we're real pleased, pleased to have Dale here today to talk a little bit about what they're currently focusing on and some of the, the uh, primary objectives of the health care centers committee and his staff. As you may know, and certainly Dale, you're aware, the county board last September, September of 05, uh, made a rather significant decision, and that was to support the Health Care Center's committee direction. And specifically, that direction was to downsize or right size Sunny Ridge. And there were also other uh, recommendations as part of that report that the Health Care Center's committee forwarded to the county board. Since then, you've been working diligently to begin implementing those recommendations. Please start by sharing with our viewers, how did this all come to be? Give us a little background before we get into what we're doing in the future. Be glad to, Adam. Um, we go back to in November of nine, uh, 2003, we uh, established a citizens task force um, who were instructed to take a look at uh, what alternatives might be uh, should be possibly pursued for the healthcare centers. And they uh, convened for approximately uh, seven months. And in June of 04, they submitted a re their recommendations to the county board. And just briefly, um, the, the recommendations were, first of all, to take a look at renegotiating wages and benefits that might be comparable to the uh, private sector. Secondly, they want us to take a look at implementing Gunnarsson and Graham recommendations. Gunnarsson and Graham were consultants that we had hired to take a look at our operations. Thirdly, they were wanting us to um, take a look at the county departments, whether they would be willing to work towards some savings overall that would help uh, the health care centers. And fourthly, to, to analyze possible uses other uses for the um, Sunny Ridge facility. Considering all of those, if um, they were not able to, if we, we as healthcare centers were not able to uh, achieve a 75% reduction in the tax levy, um, then there should be consideration to possibly leasing or selling Sunny Ridge. And that gets me right to the next question. The, the county board appointed this Healthcare Center Citizens Task Force, if I recall correctly, yes, it, was, they did. it was about 17 members or thereabouts, and they met a little more. Uh, we've had Gunderson and Graham Consultant come in and look at our operational structure and provide recommendations. They worked hand in hand with the, the Citizens Task Force. But what was the purpose of this? Why did the county board establish the Citizens Task Force to begin with? Over the last several years, since about 2002, our tax levy has gone up. Um, tremendously. And just, uh, for example, in 2005, we had to have tax levy of, of a little over $5 million. Projected for 2006, it's, it's going to be $6 million. So we knew we had to take a look at uh, ways that we would be able to reduce that tax levy if we continued to operate at our, you know, even, even at a lesser capacity. And very quickly, what was the key reason that our the property tax levy had to be increased so much in the past four or five years? Um, that's been somewhat reduction in revenue that we're receiving from the state of Wisconsin. As we know, we, we received a, quite a bit of uh, intergovernmental transfer dollars that are being very severely reduced as we go forward. So if my memory serves, I think six years ago, we actually had a flat tax levy for the operations of our healthcare centers, as did many county-run nursing homes across the state. And then as federal and state revenue has declined, and when I say declined, I mean declined significantly by millions of dollars. As you pointed out, we had a $5 million tax levy in 2005 and 406, 
it's gone up to 6.1 million. So clearly what's driving a lot of the discussion is that reduction in state and federal revenue. So that sets the stage a little bit for why the task force was created and some of the work that you've been doing. What are some of the key objectives now that the Healthcare Centers Committee has set out to accomplish? As you mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, we've been given direction in September definitely to be looking at, at downsizing Sunny Ridge. And so that process involves the state of Wisconsin. We, we um, just recently filed a, a downsizing plan with them to reduce um, somewhere between 100, approximately between 125 and 150 for a license capacity at, at Sunny Ridge. A second piece of that, we'll talk about a little later probably, is, is Rocky Knoll and that uh, there would be a downsizing plan uh, submitted to for the, for the ICFMR. Um, as a part of that downsizing plan, we would create two licensed facilities at, at, at uh, Sunny Ridge. Um, and we do that, again, because there's provisions that give us the opportunity to realize some reimbursement advantages in this downsizing plan. I know there's been questions as to why we want, would want to do that. Um, so those are the main things that, that we're currently working on with the state of Wisconsin. Now our viewers just heard you say that we're looking to downsize Sunny Ridge to a range of approximately between 125 and 150. What's our current census at Sunny Ridge? Current census is 208. 208. And as we go through this process of reducing our census there, how does that occur? Could you clarify what you know how that occurs because as you know occasionally people will read letters to the editor or hear someone say that well, folks are being kicked out or they're being asked to leave or, you know, comments such as that. Sure. How does that yeah. decrease occur over time? We made a decision as of November 14th that we would freeze admissions and the only, we would achieve the downsizing through attrition only. So no, we're not discharging people uh, to other facilities. And when you mentioned earlier a, a phase down plan and that you forwarded a request to the state of Wisconsin. Please explain well, what is a major phase down? What does that involve? Well, the phase down means that you are, you are submitting to them a plan that you want to reduce the number of licensed beds that you currently have. To the state of Wisconsin? Yes, no. yes. Um, as a part of that, for realizing uh, some uh, uh, reimbursement advantages as you downsize because you there are certain fis fixed costs that continue um, in order to meet their criteria, for example, you have to have 15% of your beds uh, that are occupied de-licensed. And then for re additional reimbursement in our capital, um, such as the building piece, you have to have at least 25% of all your licenses uh, de-licensed. So those are the things that make up uh, the components of a major uh, downsizing plan. Now, as viewers listen to that last response, we may have lost a few people because I know it gets complex with, that, the, with the intricacies of the phase down plan itself. But the bottom line is we need to work with the state. There has to be agreement. And that's part of how we can continue to maintain some funding is by locking in an agreement with them. Uh, probably one of the most important aspects of all this is community relations and making sure that the residents and their family members and guardians know what's going on and why. How have you been communicating to uh, family members and the public at large? Various ways. Um, internally with our residents, there's a resident council meeting every month which the administrator attends and, and discusses uh, questions and concerns that they have about it. Um, we have had uh, family meetings, uh, relatives, guardians, et cetera, that were, were invited to uh, initially we explained exactly what we were going to do and we will be having another one of those very shortly. We try to do that as things start to happen, you know, as a part of this, of this downsizing. Um, of course, we've, we've uh, discussed it at, at our healthcare centers committee meetings. Um, there's, there's been letters that we've written again to, to the various uh, parties that are that are involved so 
a variety of, of communications? If you want to learn more, you shouldn't have to work real hard to get the information. That's essentially your point, is it not? Yes. Healthcare Centers Committee meetings, they're all open to the public, and uh, your chairman, Mike Vandersteen, of the Healthcare Centers Committee, he also provides an update at every county board That's meeting. That's correct. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Dale. Yeah, we've been talking about a lot of changes that are going to be occurring at Sunny Ridge, but things are also happening at Rocky Knoll. Could you explain why we're going to be going out of the ICFMR, the Woodlake Village business at Rocky Knoll? Sure. Um, in 2003, the this, this state passed legislation that restricted admissions to the ICFMR um, and also required that anyone living in the, the facility would be reviewed annually as to whether they would meet what they call the definition of the most integrated setting that they can live in. And when I say integrated setting, mainly we're talking about a person being able to live in the same situation that maybe you and I experience out in the community. So this really narrowed down um, whether it's appropriate for our residents to be continuing to live in the, the ICFMR. We knew immediately we weren't gonna get any more admissions because of that freeze. And we also um, have seen as, as they review that there is going to be opportunity to place individuals out in the community in different settings and in, in, in family homes. So um, we felt that it would be necessary that, that we um, proceed with, with ultimately closing the facility. What is the actual timeline for the closing and how will that occur? Is there kind of a drop dead date by which we expect everyone maybe moved somewhere else and that other place might be another bed in Rocky Knoll? The Health Care Committee took action um, a month ago to indicate that we would be closing no later than December 31st of 2006. So we will be working on toward, toward that goal. Okay. It's my understanding that Health and Human Services is very involved in this process. Could you explain how their involvement is taking place? Yes, they, they are. Um, first of all, they're very involved in the plan when it's reviewed for a resident as to whether they feel that the recommendation would be the place in the community and then further deciding and making available um, community uh, placement. I think just very recently they've been able to secure going forward some, some uh, providers that will either renovate or build new uh, complexes in the community to, to meet um, the needs of those residents that will be being discharged. Okay. We've heard a lot about a concern that some of the residents of the ICFMR may have no place to go. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? My assumption is that there will be some place. Yes, definitely. Um, a couple things. If, for some reason or other, a person isn't successful, may, may need to just, you know, need a little more concentrated programming, there are provisions for them to come back to the, to the nursing home or if you had, still had an ICFMR for anywhere up to 120 days. So hopefully you, you, know, you would be able to deal with the issues that they have, have them go back to their other setting. If there had to be some permanency and they had to go into an ICFMR, that would mean they may have to go to a, a, you know, another county. But I don't really see that happening. I think we will be able to, to handle the, their needs within um, the, the nursing home. There are some residents currently in our ICFMR that will probably move directly to our nursing home that we know right now have more medical needs than they would have um, dealing with you know, other uh, issues and, and we'll be able to do that. So no, I, I, I know we will definitely have plans to be able to provide services for these individuals. Okay. Some folks have asked, why don't we convert the ICFMR to a CBRF? Has your committee addressed that question? Yes, this was again part of, of the overall planning that, that um, 
um, has gone into this. We had recommendations from Gunnarsson and Graham. They took a look at what the need was for CBRFs in our, in our community versus needs for other kinds of services. Um, their recommendation definitely was not to go the, the CBRF way, but to convert that to a, um, skilled nursing beds and then concentrate on uh, rehabilitation services through, through Medicare. I know backing up a little bit with the ICFMR, converting it to a CBRF for developmentally disabled, there is no funding available. So it was a pretty easy question there um, to, um, or you know, a pretty easy answer to, to that, that question. But, but even with, uh, for geriatric, funding issues and just not feeling that the, that would be the best area to be concentrating on for use of that facility in the future. What are the committee's plans for use of Woodley, of that actual physical plant once the ICFMR is closed? Part of our downsizing plan will be to be able to transfer skilled beds to those 37 and convert those 37 beds to skilled. Those, as you know, are all private rooms. We feel like that that, that gives us um, a marketing uh, avenue for more and more people when they have to make that decision to come to nursing homes are looking for private rooms. And secondly, um, skilled rehabilitation, uh, the therapies, is another area that seems to be in demand. And we're even talking about possibly outpatient, where somebody may have had a, a knee replacement or they had a hip replacement. They need some outpatient therapy. They could come to that unit and, and uh, receive it there. So. Um, we will be working on marketing for, for those, uh, providing those services. Okay, uh, one final question regarding both the right sizing of Sunny Ridge and what's occurring at Rocky Knoll. I worked in the human services field for 31 years and it seemed that there was an increasing pressure from both the federal and state government that more and more individuals that in the past had been cared for in a nursing home or institution could be placed somewhere else. Isn't that in Maine what's driving most of this? It's a very good point. It definitely is. Uh, as, as you look at the, the increasing number of people that are going to need services, skilled facilities can't take care of them, nor is it necessarily that they should, they are the most appropriate setting. Um, so they are restructuring reimbursement to make it more um, easy to access for in, in community service. And I think it's, it's coming down to the, the nursing homes are gonna care for really the most needy mm -hmm. um, resident where they may have um, dementia is, is certainly an area or short-term rehabilitation. I just looked at our statistics la for last year and um, pretty close to 50% of our residents were discharged. You know, we had 50, you know, so sure. as you say, we're moving more and more to community type placements and, and using nursing homes only for those most needy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dale. You, you just spoke a fair amount about the ICFMR and some of our viewers might be wondering, well, what is an ICFMR? It's, it's those letters stand for Intermediate Care Facility for the Mentally Retarded. And how many residents are in that unit right now? We have 30 residents. 30 residents. So at Rocky Knoll, there's a total of 195. Yes. And 30 are in that ICF, um, ICFMR unit. And those are the 30 that when the county board made the decision, supporting the, or the health care centers committee made the decision to close that based on state law, those are the 30 individuals that we're seeking to integrate into the community. Yes. How many thus far have uh, left the ICFMR and have gone to the community in a more integrated setting? We have, we have three right now since we started to really take a look at, at, at discharging. Very good. Um, and, and reports back are that they're doing very fine in the, in the community. And we, we do plan to, uh, as we've had in the past, have meetings with guardians um, 
Health and Human Services has worked very hard to open up uh, community uh, pl uh, facilities that they're using to allow guardians to see, um, you know, what what services are providing out there, and, and we will be continuing to do that. I think there's always that, and naturally, when they've lived with you for a time, it's their home, um, the concern about making change. So we're trying to, to do as much as we can to, to um, relieve that. I wanted to, to take a couple of minutes since we have you here today, Dale, because again, this continues to be one of the most important pressing matters that the county board and our organization as a whole continues to be challenged with and I think you've already addressed some of the real key questions uh, as you shared earlier and as we discussed uh, state and federal revenue to support our operations our health care centers has reduced by five six seven million dollars over the last six years and as those dollars have gone down our tax levy has gone up and in fact uh, our finance director shared with me recently that if you look at our increase in the last six years alone, the tax levy has gone up 480% in a six year period. 480%, those of you watching this, if you think about your bills at home and the cost of fuel and heating your home or filling your gas tank, if we had a 480% increase in that short period of time, I think we'd all be pulling our hair out. It's a tremendous challenge. The other thing that Chairman Gehring and I and the county board as a whole and you and Dale, the other 22 department heads know is that we now have a state imposed levy cap on county government. That provides for no more than a 3% increase each year in our property tax levy. Well, a 3% increase in our property tax levy is about $1.3 million for all county operations. Last year, the tax levy for the health care centers went up from 5 million to 6.1 million. One department. That's about a 20% increase. All the other departments received less than 3%. So certainly, it isn't a lack of care or concern about our health care center's operations. It isn't a lack of care or concern about the residents we care for. And our quality of care is second to none. But from a dollar and cents standpoint, right now, the county board and as an organization, it just continues to be a tremendous challenge. And I, for one, appreciate the proactive stance by the health care centers and the county board to put together the citizens task force to hire outside consultants to look at our operations and um, the bottom line is today and many people aren't aware of this but today out of 72 counties in the state of Wisconsin no one owns and operates more beds than Sheboygan County we're number one so despite the downsizing that's currently going on or right sizing at Sunny Ridge despite some of the things that are happening with the ICFMR, despite the financial situation and the incredible increase in the property tax levy to support these facilities, we're number one. No one is providing a broader level of service. And I certainly take some pride in that, and I know you, Dale, do, and I know Chairman Gehring does, but whether we like it or not, we have to deal with the realities of the situation, and it's difficult, it's challenging. And going back to the reality of the situation, back specifically to Sunny Ridge, which, which you know, has most of the attention from a standpoint of, of right sizing and reducing the uh, the overall uh, facility operations. How, how does this impact of the freeze work? You mentioned earlier we're, we froze admissions, but we have criteria in place that will allow some people mm -hmm. to still come to either Sunny Ridge or Rocky Knoll. Some people can't. How does that work? The, the criteria right now is, is that if there is no other bed available within county facilities for whatever reason, whether a facility can't take them or, or uh, you know, they're just, it isn't possible, then Sunny Ridge would take an admission. And as I said earlier, we froze admissions as of November 14th. Since that date, currently, we have admitted eight residents. So to me, the, you know, the, the um, other facilities are absorbing um, the admissions. You do go through periods of time, and I think we may be heading into it right now where there is a, a higher demand and we may have to, to um, you know, admit some people. But nevertheless, even after eight admissions, as I said, we're at 208 and we started with 242 on November 14th. 
So from a timetable standpoint, we were seeking to reduce our numbers over a two, two and a half year time frame from mm -hmm. around what were we at 240 down to again somewhere between 125 and 150 mm -hmm. and we're already at 208 in a matter of four months less yes less so we may we may meet that t target sooner rather than later it would it would indicate are there you mentioned earlier and certainly the three of us feel strongly about it Sheboygan County is going to continue to be the safety net net for the neediest of the needy that's not going to change uh, how through this process do we ensure that that's the situation? For example, how, what's your vision for Rocky Nell? What's your vision for Sunny Ridge once Sunny Ridge gets down to that 125, 150 number? Well, at, at Sunny Ridge, um, we're definitely thinking that we will concentrate on dementia and the rehab, as I, meant, I indicated, even at Rocky Knoll. So um, those two areas where the greatest demand will be. Um, at Rocky Knoll, uh, as, as we say, we are not going to probably deal with nearly as large a population of, of development and disabled, but we may have a few yet that are going to have to need our services. The mentally ill will continue to service and then have a mix of, of um, geriatric Alzheimer's, we have a, you know, we have a special unit too. So I, I do think, yes, going forward, the neediest of the needy will, will be served. And as I've said earlier uh, many times, we need to be mission driven because of the fiscal constraints that, that we're faced with. We need to look at what our purpose is going forward. And even after that right sizing, we're still gonna be leading the state from a standpoint of the level of service that we provide. Correct. We would be number two. We'd be number two out of 72 counties. Yes. Uh, just to clarify for our viewers, while there is a freeze on admissions at Sunny Ridge, there is no freeze at Rocky Knoll for the normal nursing home admission, right? If there's a bed available, That's right. there can and be an admission. We expect discharge planners to include us as a part of for the placements. Right. I know we only have a couple of minutes remaining. Very quickly, after this right sizing occurs at Sunny Ridge, the north building is going to be vacant. And I think many people appreciate that this saga could continue. Financially, we're still seeing the pressures from the state and federal level. We're still going to have to live within a cap. What do you envision happening to that north building to help us keep two facilities operating? Well, we're very interested in finding out what um, maybe other health-related businesses or even um, uh, other non-health related uh, businesses might be interested in utilizing that for. And we will be in the, within the next week sending out a request for information from a very broad number of, of um, companies to see their interests. And hopefully from there, we would be able to um, pursue engaging in some type of a a lease arrangement with, with interested parties to utilize that north building. Outstanding. Well, Dale, thank you so much for being our guest today and touching on a lot of information in a short period of time. For those of you who have uh, followed this program today, and if you have more questions, suggestions, concerns, don't hesitate. Please don't hesitate to contact uh, Healthcare Centers Director Dale Pauls, Health and Human Services Director Ann Watergym, any of their staff, myself or Chairman Gehring personally, this is, this is, again, continues to be an ongoing challenge, a very important issue for Sheboygan County, and one that we certainly would appreciate the benefit of your input. Don't hesitate to contact us. Don't hesitate to call if you have questions. Uh, we'd rather get the, good inf get the right information out there rather than see incorrect information circulated. So thank you for joining us, and on behalf of the Sheboygan County Board, Chairman Bill Gehring and myself, Adam Payne, it's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm.